Selling covered call options is one of the simplest ways to generate passive income. So in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you everything you need to know about covered calls. That way you can make some easy side money. If you're new here, my name is Greg and I make videos about stock market updates and options trading strategies. In this video, we're talking about one of the most foolproof profitable options trading strategies to ever exist, selling covered calls. So first I'm gonna start by helping you understand the fundamentals behind a covered call option. Then I'm gonna give you a real example over on Robinhood. And then finally, towards the end of this video, I'm gonna give you some of the best stocks to sell covered calls with. Now you've likely already bought a call option before where you paid another trader in order to purchase that option. The amount that you paid in order to enter into that call option is called premium, a fancy term for how much the option costs. Now the person that sold you that option contract gets to collect that premium from you upfront. For most stocks, you can sell covered call options up to four times a month every single week, creating a simple form of passive income. Last month, I sold just two covered call options on Workhorse for $171 of premium. And while that might not sound like a lot, that is more than 10% of my initial investment. In order for me to sell those covered call options, I needed to own 100 shares of Workhorse stock, which I ended up buying a couple months ago for $16 at a total investment of $1,600. So in order for you to sell a covered call option, you're gonna need to own over 100 shares of a single stock. Otherwise, the strategy would come with unlimited risk. Since the stock has no cap on what their share price could potentially reach, this means that theoretically, the option that you sold could gain unlimited value. To protect you from the scenario, you're gonna have to put 100 shares of the stock down as your collateral. Kind of like how banks might require you to put your car down as collateral when buying into a house. And just like investing into a house, you could end up losing on your investment if you choose a place with a lot of issues. Similarly, if you choose to sell a covered call option before a massive increase in the share price, you might end up having to sell your 100 shares. But this is only going to be the case if your option becomes in the money. Or in other words, if the share price is above the strike price that you set. If your option becomes in the money, then the buyer of this option contract can execute it at any time before the date of expiration. Now it's unlikely that the buyer would actually do this because then they would be losing out on all the extrinsic time value that's left in this option. But if this option expires in the money, then the buyer has no other choice and you're gonna have to sell your 100 shares at the strike price you agreed on. Luckily for you though, since you didn't buy back the contract, you get to keep all of the premium that they paid you, so it's not a total loss. On the other hand, if the option expires out of the money, or in other words, the share price is below your strike price at the time of expiration, then you get to keep your collateral, your 100 shares, as well as the premium. Now, if you're attached to the hip with your 100 shares and you don't want to sell out of the company, then you can buy the option contract back, but keep in mind that you're probably going to lose money on this option. A better strategy, instead of taking that loss, would be to let it expire in the money, sell your 100 shares, and then try to buy them back with a cash secured put. I made an entire video about selling cash secured puts, which you can check out in the description below. That covers all the fundamentals behind selling a covered call. We talked about how you can collect weekly premium, how you need to own 100 shares of the company, and what's gonna happen when the option expires. So let's get into an actual example. I'm choosing to sell covered call options on Workhorse. So if we trade options and go to the October 9th expiration date, I'm gonna sell a $26 call option. For this, I will be paid $35 of minimum credit. This is that premium that I was talking about earlier, and I get to keep this $35 unless I end up buying the option back before it expires. When we go to review this, you can see that I'm putting down 100 shares of Workhorse as my collateral, just in case this trade goes against me. If Workhorse's share price were to somehow climb to $50 by this Friday, October 9th, then this option would have $24 of intrinsic value and I would have to buy it back for $2,400. Instead, I just get to feel like a complete idiot for selling my 100 shares at $26 instead of 50. But obviously, this is what I agree to whenever I sell this option contract. 
If we read through the order summary before we swipe up to submit, I'm agreeing to sell 100 shares of Workhorse at $26 per share on or before October 9th. But if Workhorse's share price were to close below $26, say $25.99 on October 9th, then I get to keep my 100 shares of their stock and I also get to keep all the premium I was paid. Next week, I could sell another call option, keep the wheels turning, and keep raking in that consistent premium. But the problem whenever you're selling premium on a stock like Workhorse is that their share price moves 10% on nearly a daily basis. So you're not going to be able to get consistent amount of premium every single week. And that's why I personally suggest picking a stock that has a stable share price. And this leads me into the best stocks to use for covered call options. Possibly the best stocks that you can use to sell covered calls would be on dividend stocks. Not only will you get passive income by selling premium, whenever the dividend day comes around, you'll be paid a healthy dividend for owning 100 shares of the stock. If you were to choose something like AT&T, for example, it would cost you $2,800 to buy 100 shares of their stock, and you'll be paid roughly $40 a week in premium, and whenever the dividend day comes around, you'll be paid $50 worth of dividends. Over the course of a year, if we add all of this up, you're going to make $2,300. Now, while dividend stocks are generally safe to use with covered call options, they don't necessarily offer the best return on your investment. You might be able to get a better ROI if you choose a steady growth stock such as Microsoft. If you have 100 shares of Microsoft laying around, you can sell covered call options to generate around $200 a week. And as Microsoft continues to grow, the call options that you're selling will gradually gain value as well. Now, this definitely isn't an exact science, but since Microsoft has gained on average 70% over the last five years, you can expect nearly 70% more in premium each year as well. Now, if you don't have $20,000 in order to buy Microsoft, you can also use a strategy on Apple, and this will cost you around $11,500 at their current share price. Now, I know that's still a lot of money to put down, but that's a price that you have to pay for these steady growth stocks. If you're okay with a lower return on your shares, you should look into selling covered calls in the financial sector. Big banks such as Wells Fargo and Bank of America are under $25, which means that you'll pay less than $2,500 to buy 100 shares of their stock, and you'll get paid around $30 a week in premium. That's about a 1% return on your initial investment every single week, which is pretty good, but it's not a lot. If you want a higher return on selling your covered call options, you're going to have to pick some more risky stocks, such as Tesla, Square, and Workhorse. Selling covered call options on Tesla right now would make you around $1,300 a week. Square might make you around $300 and Workhorse will pay you roughly $80 a week. The issue with these huge growth stocks is that their returns are inconsistent, which means that your premium is going to be inconsistent as well. For instance, last month I was paid $100 to sell a covered call option on Workhorse for a $36 strike price. And the week before that, I was only paid $70 in premium to sell a covered call at a $30 strike price. Granted, that is still a 10% return on my initial investment, so I'm pretty happy with it. If I continue to get this same monthly return, I'll be able to more than double my investment over the next year. But again, this is going to be extremely inconsistent. Whenever you're using this strategy on these type of stocks, you also run the risk of selling the call before a huge catalyst on the stock. So you might end up selling your 100 shares way short of what they're going for at the time that your option expires. That's why it's always important to sell a covered call at a strike price you're actually willing to sell your 100 shares for. And this is the reason why I only sold two call options on Workhorse last month. I'm not exactly comfortable with selling Workhorse for anything less than $30 right now. Maybe whenever Workhorse sees a huge gain, then I'll start to sell cover calls again. But until then, if you want to keep up with what trades I'm making in real time, I post all of my trades over on my Discord. It's the first link down in the description, it's pinned in the comments, and it's completely free. So that's everything I have for you today. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, remember to stay positive, stay green. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.